Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY24 earnings conference call of Axo Noble Limited hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menin from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, uh, as always, uh, it's uh, it's an absolute pleasure and privilege uh, to host the conference call of uh, Axa Noble. Uh, we have the senior management, uh, you know, from the company today, uh, represented by Mr. Rajiv Rajgopal, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. R. Krishna, CFO and Whole Time Director, and Mr. Rajiv Jha, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer. Uh, without much ado, over to Rajiv for the opening remarks, post which we'll open for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I just want to firstly thank all of you for taking your valuable time out and joining us for the investor call. As always, uh, you know, for me, the investor call is about giving an opportunity to all of you to ask. I'm here joined by the team today, uh, R. Krishna, who is the CFO uh, of the company, uh, Rajiv Jha, who is the company secretary, and for the first time, more as a participant and observer, we've got Rohit Totla, who is the whole time director, who is looking after the decorative paints business. Yeah, so he's just coming to the board. So really, will will sort of uh, be sort of watching, you know, just observing uh, the proceedings. And it's a part of, you know, building talent for the future. Uh, pretty much what I went through when I joined the company in, you know, in, in 2015 and 16 before I went to Dubai. Yeah. Uh, so really pleasure. What we want to do today is really to give time to all of you for the Q and A. We've loaded the presentation on deck onto the website. So for those of you who are very curious too, I don't think this is about, the investor call is about my presentation skill set. Uh, so I'm gonna spare you the trouble of running through all the slides, but I'll just use the first, you know, just talk about a few things which are contextually important for Axon Nobel and we. As all of you know, our CEO, Greg, has announced a new company purpose called Pain the Future, right? And, you know, we used to have the, the company purpose, which was more around people, planet, paint, and we decided to use paint the future. As many of you may be aware, that India is one of the countries that also ran a pilot for paint the future, where we wanted to bring, look at futuristic, innovative solutions and how we could get digital in the way we go. And we partnered with NASCOM, uh, and we were very fortunate to have Devjani Ghosh, who was the president of NASCOM, and her team help us in doing that entire work. And we will, at a point in time when relevant, bring you some of the outcomes of it. We had already shared it earlier. So the company purpose is really moving to paint the future. This is about really creating the world of possibilities by looking at sustainability-driven innovation, superior quality and customer service, and most importantly, empowering our teams and collaborating for growth. I think for Axo Nobel, it's not just about innovation uh, and our brands, but it's also about putting people and society first as we move ahead. So that's really the first thing I really wanted to talk about. It's there in the deck in the early slides. And we are looking when you talk of sustainability of saying that how could we really move, uh, you know, away to some of the things which are likely to become big themes as we move forward, whether it's in terms of sustainable solutions, paints and coatings, the, the two verticals, how can we move to a completely renewable energy, uh, 50, 48 to 50% of our sites already use renewable energy. How can we move to 100% in India and put a flag there? Uh, how do we really move to recycle plastic, not just in terms of what the government expects regulations, but be the thought leader. And that's what we are working on. And most importantly, in our CSR, uh, yeah, how can we connect with communities to try and make sure that we are empowering and more women um, so one of the projects that we are very proud of is a project called Indra Dhanush, where we've trained women painters uh, and livelihoods in about five states. Uh, we started it small today. We've got about 1,000, 2,000 women leader painters in our organization, and they are, some of them are in fact running their own stores, right? So really, how can we move it? How can we get you know, a large part of our portfolio on life cycle assessment? And most importantly, personally for me, how can you create a culture of diversity and inclusiveness right in this organization as you move forward right so on sustainable solutions we've done a lot whether it's in terms of the uh, the hull care products for our marine ships as many of you know today we quote uh, most of the navies around 
South Asia. Uh, you know, and we're proud of it. We've also done the INS Vikrant, as all of you know, uh, where we had a large share. Uh, we are also driving performance of electric vehicles using our powder coatings products. And, you know, in some of the world-class airports that you see, whether it's Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore, it's all coated with Axon Nobel. And I'm really proud to be a part of the Bangalore new airport, uh, where all the three products are powder coatings, decorative paints and our industrial coating, coil coating has been used, and even uh, to a small way, even our protective coatings, right? So really, that's what it is about. And we've got world-class products, uh, particularly brands like Sikkin and Lesanil, which give a lot of you know productivity and lowering energy costs in our workshops, right? Uh, we've also signed in, as they call a brand ambassador, rock, rocking star Yash needs no introduction, the first celebrity who has really made it very big in just two movies uh, across 1,000 crores. Uh, Yash has we is endorsing a brand called Weather Shield Powerflex. And uh, as you would expect, the idea was to really make inroads into the southern market, particularly Karnataka, AP, where we are represented. We've had a great start with him on the board. And we've done a lot in terms of relaunch of our whether it's in you know in our premium portfolio of wood or even in our projects portfolio as we move forward for me some a moment of pride is really around really saying that we won the you know a trusted brand sort of uh, uh, and and for the second time in, in in a row and that's to be really heartening because that's really what really you know this organization is all about so that's what i really wanted to cover i think the financials are there for you uh, krishna can just talk through the financials in a couple of lines and then we'll open it for q and a yeah krishna uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Raji. Good afternoon uh, uh, to all the people who are on the call. And uh, Uber was as alluded by Raji, which is slightly difficult for from the industry per se. And uh, we have seen the muted demand and the uh, price cuts, uh, which are explained in the deck. Uh, on this backdrop, uh, we could able to man we managed to achieve our uh, offline growth of two percent, and uh, which is also driven by the double digit volume growth. Uh, what has led to this is uh, is the focus and the discipline of execution. Of course, uh, the pipeline conversion of the B2B businesses and the new customer wins, which has supported to continue to the outperform from the market. The materials have been uh, soft during the quarter, and uh, which has also led to the margin expansion, despite of the price drops. Uh, margins are margins expand, gross margins expanded by around 110 basis points. Uh, we continued our investments in the brand building and uh, growth initiatives uh, at the same time we are cognizant of the other cost controls measures which are non-growth related costs uh, and this has resulted in terms of improving the profitability and the profit of the tax was at 108.8 crores uh, which is a increase of 14 percent on a year-on-year -year basis i think these are these are the this and uh, the our focus in mind in terms of uh, the prudent work capital management which is also resulting in the cash flow improvements uh, as it uh, this is also uh, this is also resulting into uh, higher payouts to the shareholders that's a that's a key summary of the last uh, quarter and the full year Raji. no thank you krishna so you know I, I think we've given you all our financial numbers what really i'm proud of is our eps for the year has moved if you look at 2021 we were at 63.8 uh, to 73.58 to 93.7 our return on capital employed now is almost at 45%. And, uh, you know, subject to shareholder approval, we've also announced an uh, interim dividend uh, but now uh, of, of, 20, uh, of, of uh, you know, the, the additional amount that we've given 25, right? So seven, making it 75. And, uh, you know, these uh, for me uh, is really to say that we really want to make sure that our investors are also reaping the benefits of the performance of the company. So that's in a nutshell what we had. Manoj, over to you and the team to help us yeah. to moderate the Q&A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask an interactive question, please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar, or you may click on the Q&A icon to raise hand. The operator will announce your name when it is your turn to ask a question. To ask a text question, you may click on the text tab available on the top by clicking on the QA tab and type your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
first question is from the line of Lakshmi Narayanan KG from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, you can hear me, right? Lakshmi, you have to be a little louder. You are not audible, yeah, you sir. May I request you to use your answer? Yeah, you can hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. So a couple of questions. So uh, first, I would take the uh, the projects business. I just want to understand uh, uh, what has been the revenue growth of the projects business. Uh, what has been the volume growth of the business? See, we wouldn't be able to split it, but suffice to say, as I keep saying, our projects business is growing double digit, both in volume and value. Got it. Got it. Uh, because you mentioned uh, that it's around 50, uh, you know 23, 24 percent of your decorative business so i just wanted to check whether that yeah, that's correct it's about 20 percent now 20 retail is also now uh, done well so it's about uh, about 20 odd percent of our decorative business so is it fair to say that in the projects almost you are you are uh, you are number three because of, uh, in the industry look uh, you know the projects business as you can imagine because of the segments there is no clear reporting uh, in, in in what it is we would love to believe that we are also possibly a number two, but yeah, we will take it with a little bit of humility and say possibly a number three for sure. Got it, got it. And what kind of growth, uh, you know, this business would have? Uh, is it like a sustainable thing because uh, you had uh, uh, certain airports which you signed up? Uh, some of I think some of the Delhi Vista project also you alluded. Is that something which uh, you know can can I, can have like a double digit growth in the next? To no, five look, India's GDP is getting powered by public investments, and public investments largely is around infrastructure. So, as long as the GDP is getting powered by public investments, uh, you know, which which is a reflection of the real growth, underlying growth of the GDP in the country, I do believe it's it's here to stay, right? Because I believe that look, the India of tomorrow is going to be from the very different from the India of today, and surely the India of yesterday. If you look at some of the airports, the railway stations, at least the photographs that are coming to all of us, right, are world class. The fact is, over a period of time, we are fortunate to live in an era where we are seeing super fast trains, at least in some of the towns, cities. Uh, of course, some of it, high rail, etc., is yet to come in, but at least the thinking is there. And to me, if the thinking is there, that tells you directionally that people will make it happen, right? So I think my belief is yes, to answer your question, it will be sustained. Uh, again, you know, I cannot talk of outliers, uh, 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 but otherwise keeping things as they are, uh, you know, I do think that, yes, I think this is Got going it. to stay. The infrastructure is going to lead the growth in this country, even for the next five, six years. Got it. Uh, so on the coatings business, what has been the revenue growth and volume growth of the business? Was it also in double digits? The volume was double digit. The revenue was uh, uh, a bit single digit. Because our overall revenue growth you've seen is approximately 2.3%, right? And that's largely because of the price drop of 4.5% on the paint. No, I'm talking about the full year. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the full year. Okay, you're talking about the full year? The full year, yes. The answer is yes. Both were double digit. Got it. And, and in the coatings business, uh, uh, you know, what? which are the key industries you're serving? And uh, do you see... Uh, um, you know, some kind of uh, an improvement in any particular industry is doing. So, for example, uh, wind energy sector. For I mean, is, do you want to call out some sectors that is actually doing well in the? Oh, no, uh, industry? I think all the all the growth horizon sectors of India we are adequately partaking in. Whether it is energy, wind, EV, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, solar. In some way or the other, we are there. Infrastructure, largely, right? High value infrastructure in particular. Uh, you know, again, uh, downstream oil, you know, so we are we are present in almost now uh, as a company, we are far more ubiquitous in our offerings and in our customers than we were in the past, maybe even five years ago. Got it. Yeah, the reason I'm uh, uh, trying to understand this business because uh, in the glo in a globally in the global conference call, it was mentioned that there's a huge difference between number one and number two in voting business and AXO is number one. That's correct. Globally, we are number one because you if that, are, uh, I mean, how is our standing improving in India in the coatings yeah. business? Yeah, yeah. So look, I don't want to, you know, for you know, the various businesses, coatings is just an aggregate. It's uh, the five, you know, the four different businesses. Uh, and, and really for us, you know, globally, we are number one in powder. 
uh, powder, you know, as you know, paint is either liquid or powder, and you know, we've got almost a 30% market share with the number two having a 15% market share. So I think that gives you the answer there globally. In India, of course, we remember that we participate in largely the premium segments and not in the mass segment. And that's the correction we are doing. For that, we needed capacity. Our plants are almost running full on powder. And we are opening a new capacity in our Gwalior factory very soon. In fact, in a few months' time, the plant will be commissioned. Right? So we will start getting very aggressive once the capacities are available. The same holds true for our protective business, uh, marine business. We are doing remarkably well, uh, not just because of India, because many of these uh, the fleets, uh, the shipping fleets are running all over the world, uh, and even including markets like Dubai, India, Singapore, etc., where we've got lot. There's only one part of the business which we are globally a leader, which is yet to come in India, is the aerospace, uh, which is very attractive business. Hopefully, with the Delhi new airports coming in, etc., the MRO, which is the maintenance and repair, will come in, and as a result, we should also partake in that business. We are very clear that we will win that business because we are globally working with both Boeing and Airbus to do it. We are, again, by far the market leader there. So I think, look, in the next four or five years, uh, my view is that Axonobel has a huge chance, not just in the coatings business. You will see us fight tooth and nail uh, on the paints business. Uh, we're going to use a lot of stuff uh, in terms of you know our global thought leadership, etc., to make sure we win this market. I have uh, one or two questions in decorators. Uh, Manoj, can I go ahead? Yes, I think definitely. we should just give others a chance. But sure, if you have one question, I'm more than happy to answer. Go yeah, ahead. So, okay, so in the decorators business, uh, uh, I think a couple of uh, weeks back, uh, there was an interesting interview in CNBC, uh, as you mentioned that in 56 to 60 districts of India, you are number one. And uh, you also mentioned that um, uh, in the premium segment, you're almost like 16 to 17% of the market and you're number two. Uh, so just on that count, want to understand in those country in districts, you are number one. Um, what's the revenue contribution? So is this, these uh, districts where you are number one, they are what 80, 90% of your decorative business uh, contribution? No, no, no. Or don't, if they were 80, 90, I would be overall number two, uh, number three. Uh, look, we don't want to get into that. The reason I made it is to just let you know that both historically, and over a period of time, we've been working on our brand distribution, etc. And we believe that we have a right to win. Now, what gives you a license to a right to win? Yeah, is to say that, look, does the brand have presence, which is significantly higher than your average market share in any geographies. And when I joined this company, and, uh, you know, we, when we embarked on the journey as a team, uh, we realized that there are many districts where you're either a number one or a number two. And that's really to say that what creates that and what we need to replicate that. Now, the challenge in that is when we look at it, we realize that our presence across the segments uh, in the decorative bay paint business was different. In the mass markets, for example, we are underrepresented, as you are aware, right? And the second is that over a period of time, in the transition from ICI to AXO, we lost the innovator time. So our attempt has been to say that, look, how do we really start pulling things back? And it was in that context, it is not a few six weeks ago, it was after the last investor call. And even I've been saying this, if you see my interviews ever since I took over the job, I, you know, we have a formula that is working. The question is, how can you replicate it? Uh, and this was the obviously work done by a lot of good people. How can you replicate it? Because that gives you, despite all the competition everywhere in those places, we still continue to be number one and number two, right? So how do you really replicate that magic across? Uh, so really, that was the thought behind that question. And you know, it suffice to say that in those markets, it's fairly representative. But at an aggregate level, yes, it is significantly higher than a market share. There are certain regions where we are actually double-digit market share, right? So, so uh, you know, and and that gives you a sense of you know where I was coming from. Got it. Thank you. I'll get back in queue, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arko Pratimpal. From Sanjay Agarwal Broking Limited, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Am I Hello. audible? Yes, you're audible. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity, sir. My question is uh, first. My first question is already answered by you. The volume growth. Uh, my uh, one question I have to say that uh, grassing prints is also joining the market. In Indian market, is there is so many competitors. So therefore, my question is, what is your expectation 
for the present demand scenario and what is your strategy for further growth look i think my strategy is something that i've been working on for a period of time and that uh, is uh, to pivot around our brand the quality of the product we continue we want to continue to be the best in class uh, how do we demonstrate it we've done it by launching a program called dulux assurance which is a money back guarantee which we run in many of the key markets and now across axon mobile yeah and you know bring in innovations into the market which are a little ahead of time and continue to increase our reach our distribution footprint in a very meaningful manner right now I, while doing that make sure that we are able to address our, our painter uh, you know challenges any uh, the issues how do we get a larger scale with them and how do we really make sure that we've got a larger you know retailer footprint and how do we really move seamlessly in a digital manner so quite a lot to do to be honest uh, Uh, Pratim, but I, you know, for me, I think the strategy seems to be working. If you take the last two years for your results, we have just completed the last oh. year results. You can see we are in the top two on growth now for the third year in a row, right? So I think that seems to suggest that some of the things that we are doing is working. At the same time, with all humility, I think there are certain things that we may need to tweak, right? That to make sure that we okay. continue to sustain and do better. So that's what we will continue to do. And uh, you know, uh, the reality is, look, you know, I can only. let me put it i can only control what's within my control right there will be more players yes. coming in there will be bigger names coming in uh, i cannot get deflected to whether thinking whether sachin tendulkar is playing against me or virat kohli is playing against me i can only you know improve my performance on what i do so that's what i would say yes. okay that's sure definitely good answer i get yeah, and i i am definitely privileged Uh, that so many players are coming in because it also gives us an opportunity to learn a lot of things and also mm-hmm. you know challenge some of the our own mindsets in being able to really see whether we can compete effectively in a hyper competitive environment yeah i understand uh, my uh, second question is uh, is there any change in raw material prices that may affect your operating profit margin in further <laughs> current Yeah, I'm sending it over to Krishna. Krishna. Okay, as far as the last quarter is concerned, uh, raw material prices continue to be soft, and uh, which is also resulting, this is also leading to the margin expansion. And uh, okay. what we are seeing, yeah, the trend is likely to be stable over a period of time, unless there is some amount of uh, further disruption happens in anywhere in the world, which 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 impacts the supply chain. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I thank get you, my all course. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Omang Shah from Banyan Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Omang, you are audible. Please. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we see that the market leader in the Indian decorative segment has increased his retail touch point significantly over last two years. uh i think we understand that some part of it is also coming from using the distributor model as opposed to a dealer model uh something which you started many many years back uh so just want to understand going forward will will a significant part of our sales and distribution happen through our distributor channel or would we also expand dealer channel no look ultimately distributor serve dealers today a large part of our pains business is through distributor Uh, and and uh, you know it's not to say that we don't want to we believe that for us that's the right model so we reached a, a very high stage of maturity and we are pretty happy the way the model is working it's giving us terrific gains in terms of reach lead time being able to supply products on at a faster pace than even so in some places where the market leader is that said uh, look we are right now in the business of paints and coatings uh, we are not into other products so our model Uh, you know will continue to remain as is uh, unless there is a distinct strategic need for a change sure sir sir and the second question uh, yeah okay sir and the second question was uh, uh, you when i look at the numbers uh, axo has the highest payable days in the industry uh, your creditor days so any reason why that is the case it's uh, it's based on the terms of uh, trade which we did with our uh, suppliers and a combination of uh, uh, supplier payment uh, terms yeah okay okay right sir 
uh, and sir, uh, and the last question would be, um, would it be uh, of your industrial paints business, uh, what percentage would be coming from auto? So we don't divulge the number specifically by segment. Uh, that's something that we don't we don't do. Uh, but suffice to say that, uh, as I said, there are uh, four coatings businesses, and auto is one of the larger businesses we have in the in that in that vertical. Sure, sir. Got mm -hmm. it. Got it. Uh, this is very helpful and great set of numbers. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all the participants to ask an interactive question. Please click on the raise an icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the QA tab icon to raise hand. To ask a text question, you may click on the text tab available on the top by clicking on the QA tab and type your question. The next question is from the line of Sonal Minas from Prussian Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Sonal Minas. Am I audible? Yes, Sonal. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, as a end user as well as an investor, I think just wanted to understand, uh, like uh, in the decorative premium uh, paint segment, uh, there is a clear choice between uh, in amongst painters between Asian paints and you, uh, your your product. And uh, I think uh, just wanted to understand more from a uh, product. Uh, details or chemistry perspective that uh, uh, where is the gap in terms of quality of the product uh, if at all between you and the number one player and uh, you and the latter essentially and what have you been doing to actually improve your product quality uh, from a longer term perspective and is this uh, kind of a sustainable differentiation edge uh, that you versus let's say Berger or somebody else uh, you have versus the other players so uh, uh, long question. Yeah. I can split it, but just wanted to understand your take on, on this one. Sorry. Look, our, uh, I think you partly answered by saying you and the market leader, so that that takes out everybody else. Uh, but uh, and that's the truth. So you know, the reality is what we do is we do market research where we look at people who've used Dulux, and we split it into three types of users: solars who use our products on you know every purchase occasion. Remember that in paint. A purchase occasion can mm. come in three years, four years, depending on interior, exterior, and usage, right? Uh, it's, it's, and then we look at non-core who are people who are using 50% of that purchase occasion in a span of you know three purchase cycles, and and core which is more than which is around 50% of the purchase. You'd be thrilled to know that we've got the highest amount of solar users, which basically means that in our brands, when consumers use us, uh, and that's the you know human uh, uh, truth or the moment of truth, right? So the, the truth is that when people use our products, because of the quality of products, uh, it, it is people do tend to ask for it. And, and that's the reason that's been the raison d'etre for this brand. That's the you know reason to exist as far as Dulux is concerned, uh, not just in on the walls, but also in the hearts and minds of the consumers we serve. The, the second part of your question, look, uh, on the formulations, etc. Obviously, look, we do benchmarking versus our competitors. I don't want to speak ill of anybody. I think uh, let's be on, let's understand if there's a leader with the market share that the leader has, I have to give complete respect to every player in the industry. We are not here to criticize anyone. What we are here is to set a journey for ourselves and say, how can we be the best? It's not easy, but we believe that there are three things that we believe that we can be the best. One, Dulux stands for best in class quality. And not only Dulux, any product of Axonobel, whether it's international, Interpon, Sikins, all stand for best in class quality. Second is international, right? There are very few brands which can call itself truly international. If I were to ask you, think about the beautiful cities in the world, right? You will come and tell me things in cities like London, you know, Singapore, Switzerland. Uh, you name, you know, what we've done is we've done a survey where we've seen in the top 15 cities, most beautiful cities of the world, in almost 10 to 11, Dulux has the highest market share. It's not coincidental that it's happening. It. And our market shares are mm. very high in some of the places, even in places like Gurgaon, where our office is registered that you know we have the highest usage of dlf right so i think i mm. think it's it's about uh, the chemistry of our products uh, we've got fantastic engineers who do it uh, both globally and in the country so you know kudos to them that they've been working on this over years it's not something that has turned overnight and of course there is a secret sauce that we are going to put in into the indian market which i can't tell you because it's like the formula of coca cola uh, uh, at an appropriate time when we think it's right 
we will discuss. But you know, there are certain secret ingredients that go into a paint, which is which are also available for us to really up it up the ante. And that's what we are doing. In an intense market, we believe that a better product is going to serve us longer. And that's what we are focused on. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot for this detailed answer. Second part of my question, sir, if I may just ask, is that like to like uh, for similar quality of the product, how much would you be selling at a discount or to let's say the market leader or uh, as we speak, just, just just trying to get a ballpark essentially? You know, my problem is I sell at a premium to the market leader. That's the biggest challenge that I have been facing in many places. Uh, the same product? The, the, yeah, sa I mean, the same products? You look at yeah, similar products. If you look at across categories, we've been the highest price portfolio. That's the big, been the biggest challenge for us. And one of the things that we've been trying to do is to come close to the market leader on pricing. Now, what happens in the market is slightly different. There's a concept called loss leader, which basically means that a mm. dealer is, passes on his profitability to do it. And that happens because the velocity of the brand is not commensurate with the market leader's offtake, right? Now, those mm. are very old cases in our brand. We are not a wholesale brand. We are a very retail-led brand over the years. Mm. So it really mm. doesn't matter, right, for us. So to answer your question, the our challenge is both in perception and in reality, we are seen as a bit of premium, even in categories which are mass and economy. So I think that's the bigger challenge, to be honest. Okay, got it, sir. I'll come back in the queue. Thanks a lot for answering. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants to ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon available on the toolbar or you may click on the QA icon to raise hand. To ask a text question, you may click on the text tab available on the top of your screen by clicking on the QA tab and type your question. We have a text question from the line of Dheeraj Dave from Samvad Financial Services. How many dealer we added in Q4 and total dealer as on 31st March 2024? See, look, we don't, uh, you know, let me put it, our, our number of dealers are not just count of dealers. Huh? Axo Nobel has got very stringent measures when we look at dealer additions in terms of saying there's a certain revenue, say rupees 30, 50,000 uh, revenue per outlet to really look at them in terms of retained outlets. Yeah. So we, we, our definitions are far more stringent, so it's not like to like. But suffice to say that we add anywhere close to about 3,000 outlets uh, in a year. Uh, yeah, And there's a certain fall through. We also do a lot of refurbishment of our existing tinting machines. Uh, so not just add new machines, but we also do it and, and you know move the for refurbishment there. Our focus, as I mentioned earlier, has been to really drive penetration into the next level of towns. We are very strong in tier one, tier two, moving into tier three, tier four. The team embarked in uh, you know 20 in a very meaningful way in 2017, 18, but really started in 2019. Unfortunately, got stuck by COVID, and we really pulled it through in 21 to now, right? So that's what we are focused on. Yeah. To me, also remember that we are not in categories uh, where count of dealer can increase by certain product offerings. E.g., we are yet to enter construction chemicals, uh, tile adhesives, grouts, etc. We are getting ready for that. And believe you and me, when we get ready, our products are going to be world class. And we believe we'll shift. We are already growing in waterproofing more than 30%, 25 to 30% year on year. Right? So, and the reason we do that is not because we have the, you know, the, 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 the best advertising or the most advertised brand, uh, of course, advertising is good, but because we've got great quality products that consumers buy again and again. Yeah. So that will give you a direction of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. As we start getting into uh, businesses which are more, uh, you know, where you can add outlets to make a difference, right? Uh, you would start seeing it. But for now, we are focused on the paints business and really getting into the adjacencies of the paints business. And for us, meaningful outlet is more uh, valuable than any outlet. You know, what is it, when I say meaningful, what is the turnover of the outlet or what is the volume that the outlet does with us at a monthly level or an annual level? Yep. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Purohit from Lara Capital who says, Hi, sir, can you please provide insights into your distribution reach? How this has grown in FY24 in terms of tinting machine and outlet reach? What is the share? So premium? Sorry, yeah. please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what is the share in the premium segment of the company? 
Yeah, so premium I've already said, I think somebody already asked 16 to 17 percent. Outlets also got asked, uh, you know, it's uh, 20,000 plus, 21,000, 522,000. You know, again, these numbers don't are not meaningful unless that we understand contextually because we've got a scientific way of measuring it, not just in India, but it's a global sort of definitions. Again, we look at what is the throughput per outlet we get, what is in a tinting machine, what's the drop size we get, right? We look at productivity of a tinting machine in an outlet. So our measures are a little more stricter and more stringent uh, than uh, than it is globally, which is the reason I also want to tell all of you, you're not if you've not observed, that's the reason why our uh, operating working capital is the best in the industry. I mean, you look at the paid industry and look at us. I mean, I'm saying there's such a huge difference in the way Axonobel used to operate 10 years ago and today. It's not just a reflection of our distributor model. It's also a reflection of the way we run the business, right? So to me, it's about effectiveness is more important than just numbers, right? It's about making sure that we are being meaningful and we are able to provide the entire assortment in a more meaningful manner, right? So, we, you know, 20,000 plus outlets, uh, you know, and we obviously are trying to sharpen it our, our endeavor is to, in the next two, three years, to move to 30,000. We believe that with the, all the portfolios, additions that we are adding in the next year or so, we will start, you know, we are well on that journey. We've already crossed 5,000 odd towns. Uh, we will start getting meaningful to our 8,000 town journey. I think that's really the spirit in which we are working on distribution. Thank you. We have a question from the line of Mr. Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Yeah, yes, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. You can hear me, sir. Yeah, we can hear First thing, yeah, sir. So my question is regarding capital work in progress. So if you could uh, kindly explain where this money has already been spent, uh, 119 crore. Sorry to interrupt, sir. May I request that you use your handset for a slight disturbance from your line, Mr. Kapoor? Just a second. Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. You can hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. I was, I was uh, alluding to the capital work in progress of 119 crore. Uh, what is, what will you attribute this to, and uh, when will this money get capitalized? Uh, Sajid, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, we have explained uh, that we, we are going, we we are undergoing an. Uh, uh, capacity expansion plan for the powder coatings plant uh, in Jawaria, which is uh, predominantly the capital working progress. We do expect uh, the commercial capitalization and the commercialization commercial production commencement somewhere in the uh, July and Q June and uh, July Q3. time frame. Yeah. Q2. Okay. And what kind of volume increase, sir, uh, are we expecting for the next financial year? Double digit. Okay, uh, double digit means a ten. It starts from ten. You know, uh, you know, you know. I can give a number, but you know, the sanctity of the number is a function of a lot of yes, variables. Right. Problem is, after that, nobody Correct. looks at the assumption of variables. People look at the number. So to me, right, it's right. like saying, you know, what is the color of the sky today? You know, the what I see hmm. and what you see will be different. But we've given a range of look around twelve percent. Yeah, I've said in the twelve percent should be the volume volume growth. Volume growth and the revenue growth will lag volume growth simply because. Uh, for the rest of the nine months, there is still about a three uh, percent carry forward of the price drop, right? Three to four percent that we talked about. So you know that's you can easily put the max, right? We, mm -hmm. we with the commodity prices now firming up, we don't expect any further price drops. But yeah, let's be clear, we will defend our market position. Uh, Axon Nobel is very clear. Yeah, we will defend our market position. We believe if you look at the EBIT margins uh, return on, uh, on sales, right? We are number two by far in the industry. Right, and for the market size share we have, you would you realize that very few companies, in fact, there'd be very few companies worldwide with this market share who have that return on sales. It clearly, tells you the quality of the business we run, and the you know fantastic the work which is happening between various functions, etc., to bring it to play. And this was deliberately planned because in a hyper competitive environment, I'm fine to lose one percent there, but to make sure we continue to gain top line, you know, in a manner which is you know sustainable. So that's what the focus is. Right, sir. And sir, I missed your earlier commentary on the growth prospect. If you could just allude once again, what, what how are we seeing the cur current financial year 
and then on the valuation part so when we look at the pure peers they command a significant premium to what our uh, entity although all of them some uh, are are aligned in some some way or the other but uh, you can look at, at at the valuations the top two uh, enjoys and the discount at which as as co noble trades i'm talking about the market cap uh, uh, currently which is more of a uh, uh, significant importance to your investors and the analyst community so what's the thought process of the management in in terms of that and and the growth uh, which we are pensioning in uh, taking into account the current business sentiments see the growth very clearly i think between all of us me krishna rohit uh, rajiv we are very clear that we want to be in the top 2 in growth so that answers your growth question in terms of you know uh, the price value let's be clear what we control and as a team is our performance after that i leave it to people like yourselves to decide what's the best value we've shown you what the earnings per share is over the 3 years right it's there in the investor deck we've moved significantly uh, i don't think company and look at our return on capital employed i don't know how many companies of our size shape have a 40% return on capital employed uh, so that i think is a testimony of what we bring in you've seen the you you got you're seeing the cash in our books you've seen the dividends we give we are giving sustainable dividends we are giving it you know in a in a meaningful manner uh, there were a lot of questions on why i think when i joined the company and some of you had have educated me during the journey whether there is adequate you know uh, uh, you know one of the thoughts was when i joined the company and some of the investors are on the call they have been very frank to say look the biggest problem in axon nobel is leadership changes i've been now running this company for a very long period of time yeah so and my journey is to also make sure that the next group that takes talent comes to the floor and get we get the right talent to run this organization going forward because this organization is not the organization that i joined which is a 2000 crore company with a 150 crore pack today we are talking of being a 4000 crore company with a 420 crore pack 430 crore pack and we our desire is to move significantly we are not here to give numbers you know we are not here to paint a vision which we cannot achieve what we believe is look i think this comes through a lot of hard work we comes to putting brick by brick uh, i've learned that there are a couple of times when we've had huge challenges particularly during covid because we followed and complied with every rule but what we will assure you is that for any person who invests money in this company you can have a absolute sleepless night we are top class in governance yeah and i think the people sitting around this table pride in the fact that we are world class on governance we do not allow we do not allow any compromise on ethics values and governance right, right and i think a very concluding remark yeah please sir concluding remark look i i from no, i would only uh, sorry yes sir first Do you I, can complete then i have one con concluding question sir okay you please go ahead you please ask your question uh, sir when we look at your other expenses q1 q that has shown a dip whereas year on year that has increased so what should the what are the core element of this expenses and what should we penciling in when we penciling our number in terms of as a percentage of revenue what constitute it that's a that's a good question and a detailed observation of uh, financials uh, as uh, i have explained uh, previously the focus is in terms of the brand building and how do we make our brands more relevant and present in the market space and also which will unlock the long term growth prospect also that's where we are spending and which is also yielding the growth and the results so. yeah so our, our uh, certain elements of cost which have gone up on absolutes are around anp fp okay because what we are also doing is we are now entering what are not traditionally paint outlets from a paints business perspective we are going to re, uh, re we are going to re we are in the process of reorganizing ourselves a bit uh, not huge cost but you know maybe a one time to really make sure that we are able to size these opportunities right and also let's be honest on the flip side how we are containing that cost is by becoming far more productive through value creation programs driving uh, sweating our assets both tinting machines as well as tinting as uh, sweating our factories yeah today with the amount of automation we have in our factories we are actually virtually running on one and a half one one and a half shifts and creating capacity for the future right so you know we are into building world class stuff putting a digital infrastructure first right some of which is really due hope that answers the question yes sir and if 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 i am permit to ask, ask one more on the cost of material consumed as you are mentioning that uh, the raw material prices are hardening 
and i think so we are referring to the crude derivative and crude has also been in a consistent band of 78 to 85 dollars so uh, what are you penciling in uh, in terms of sustaining your margins with respect to your cost of uh, material uh, going ahead and uh, and and on the and on the value proposition also sir i think so in the in the branding aspect uh, the ap uh, cost and all uh, as a percentage of sales need to spend to to create that market uh, market size and market awareness but how are you seeing uh, uh, the same going forward for this year as a percentage of your uh, sales so both the question on the outlook on the raw material and uh, the uh, the expenses on uh, advertisements First and foremost, I compliment you for being able to pack so many questions. It reminds me of a vegetable uh, a menu called vegetable club sandwich, which I struggle to eat when I have so many ingredients inside that sandwich. So you know, sometimes I I lose track of what all you're asking. But let me try again. Yeah. So firstly, as far as uh, you know, the expenses are concerned. Look, brand building is going to continue. Our problem is not in awareness. Our problem is in conversion. So our problem is right at the end of the funnel where when people start switching to brands uh, from consideration to purchase that's the problem and that's what we are trying to address the second uh, to your question on material prices look you know we've been through much, much harder times on raw material costs i think if there's one example 2021 would also tell you that we we took the right decisions as far as the raw material costs were concerned when the industry and many people thought that we had lost our brains right uh, we believe that look we are working on certain things to make sure that we are able to compete a hyper competitive inflationary environment if required at this time we don't see it i don't want to you know uh, exaggerate the situation as if it was going to happen i we believe that this situation you know the plus minus will not be huge of course there are variables which are outside our control but other than that which will impact everyone uh, but other than that there is nothing significantly uh, that we need to of course there are certain you know projects which we do which are a little under embargo uh, i don't think it's appropriate for me to speak on an investor call on that thank you thank you sir for all all the elaborate answer thank and you. we hope for future interactions sir again sir thank you for Look this opportunity thank, thank you dear thank you the next question is from the line of lakshmi narayanan kg from tunga investments please go ahead yes lakshmi yeah you can hear me right yeah we can hear yeah so one feedback um, you know because we talked about market capitalization just earlier you know i yeah. you know this my belief is that uh, when in come when it comes to media interviews you are on the strong front foot uh, discussing but in the investor presentation we are extremely modest uh, for example um, you know we have done extremely well in terms of our portfolio improvement we have done extremely good in terms of our distribution uh both in terms of number of distributors tinting machines uh, you know the districts you have actually uh, gone through you know from from 1500 towns to almost 5000 plus i wish you can actually put these things in in one slide so that uh, as investors we also get to know what has been the increase in across all vectors right that's just one feedback for you to uh, consider no thank you lakshmi thank you but you know uh, you know i i, I love uh, you know a cricketer who wants Uh, who my admirer who told me that the bat does the talking you know when the bat does the talking you don't need to really talk about the performance and for me really uh, for the investor community uh, you know it's not about a quarter it's not even about a year it's about sustained improved performance of the metric and lakshmi let me tell you when i joined and took over the role uh, and you have you know many of your colleagues on the call uh, i can tell you with hand on heart my 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 perhaps my heart was raising five times because the sort of questions were you know your predecessors have all come and made promises and left right so it's even important in leadership to be able to have a narrative which is consistent and not over promise but over deliver right hopefully with all your support and everyone's uh, blessings we should be on that journey so it's on the television it's slightly different you know media sound bites people start getting aggressive so you want to make sure that your voice is also heard right and again you know it's not from a perspective it's because that's a wider reach medium right uh, where everybody hears and the idea is not to communicate in terms of what we do but also who we are right so it's also share of voice as they call it right and it's also about saying how we run the company if you've seen uh, over the last 5 6 years and You know, even over the last two, three years, our endeavor has been to bring you the reality, 
to exactly tell you where we are. You know, we've never given volume growth. We've started doing that because we realize that's a necessity. The reason is because we are making a shift from value growth to uh, price led growth to volume growth in India. And we are the, the assurance we want to give to all you and all the investors is we are here to stay. Right? You know, we are not bothered about what people write about us. We are here to stay. We believe we've got the ingredients. We've got the people. And more importantly, we've got the mindset. And that's not my commitment to you. It's my commitment to Axel Nobel. Got it. There's another question yeah. uh, from a, you know, from a slightly different angle, from a supply chain point of view. Uh, yeah, you know, I understand that pains is all about supply chain and, and loss sale is like a loss forever, right? Uh, yeah, so in yeah, the last yeah. uh, one, two years, um, um, how you have actually improved your uh, supply chain in terms of getting the right product? Uh, because one feedback which I hear from uh, some of the painters I anecdotally check is that, okay, we don't get the entire, you know, from X is there, Y is not there. Um, we don't get uh, all the three kinds of uh, 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 stuff uh, from Axon Noble. So I don't know whether it's anecdotal or, or representative. Just want to understand from a supply chain point of view, how do we have ensured that, that um, the right quantity of paint is there in the right distribution and, and, and the right SKUs? Yeah, good question. What, Very uh, good question. Yeah, so luckily it's like this. See, when we embarked on the distributor journey in 2013-14, uh, we, we, we had our hands in our mouth because the world told us we will not succeed. You know, dial fast forward 10 years later, 2024, we've got a robust business where about 160 of these distributors, well, our partners actually run this business and have been running it with a fantastic work which has been done by the team uh, led by Rohit, which is why he's also here now on the board, right? And it's it's... I think we've got that model right. I think what we've not been able to do is to get all the other businesses into the outage as some of our competitors have done. Also in terms of range availability in certain markets where we are structurally weak, right? Like Andhra, we are structurally weak, right? And I, I get this myself from customers. What, how we are trying to address it is to identify those gaps and try and make sure that we are able to have a couple of large dealers converted in those areas so that we are quickly able to as and when we get it. We do that with lightning speed today, right? We were earlier not doing it. And we are planning to look at embarking on certain programs, including on lead generation, hopefully a more digitized way of working, which will enable us to do that in a far more structural manner. So that's one. Second is, uh, we have embarked on a journey on distributor to look at replenishment model, where what an outlet sells today, the distributor is able to catch uh, through a replenishment model, which is FMCG done, right? And that will also enable us to be able to exactly know which markets, what product is required, and we are able to get it immediately at head office instantly. Right? We look at today technology permits us to look at what is the cut order on a daily basis, but it comes with a lag. The idea is how do we really get it on time so that we are able to address it in a structural manner. Having said all this, it's not easy. Our challenge has also been having the right portfolio at the right price point, and also the fact that in certain structural markets where we've not been strong, to be meaningful to the outlet to able to address this issue. So those are challenges we are working on Lakshmi and uh, we will we will cross it. The reason I'm confident is because we moved the needle significantly over the last decade. And I have, I have every reason to believe when the hard work has got done, the incremental effort that is now required is much lesser than the initial work that was required in setting this up. Uh, I hope you, you so understand much. what yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Bookkeeping question. Uh, so, in terms of your freight cost, uh, last year it was around 152 crores uh, or so. Just want to understand what is it number now. And in terms of ad spends, last year and last year in FI 23 it was around 92 crores. What is the value in FI 24? And how do you think, given that you are actually embarking on a uh, on a, on a brand ambassador, etc., how you think this uh, would actually pan out in the next uh, couple of years? Uh, thanks. Thanks for the question. We will be publishing the, all the final details in the annual report uh, in the episode on for some time. Uh, I, I know I'm not answering you right now, but uh, we will we will share the, all the details which is required as per the disclosures. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. And Lakshmi, drop an email to us. We'll send you the report. Yeah. As soon yeah, as yeah. It's ready. Reason is uh, reason is because obviously you know there are certain things which we, we right now believe is still in the realm of confidentiality uh, in the way we work. Yeah, and suffice to say, at a very high level, look, we are looking at at least a 10 to 15 percent increase in ENP. Again, see, these are functions of what what market, how the market behaves. So very difficult to predict, right? I mean, none of us would have predicted early last year that the industry would have a price drop 
a full four four and a half percent between December and January. That's what happened, right? So you know, sometimes market forces also necessitates you to take action, right? Uh, the fact that we shined Yash uh, is also because obviously now the industry is getting it. So really, you want to make sure your brand stands out, and you wanted to use an ambassador who really stands out. And we believe, uh, you know, obviously Yash, if you've seen his, uh, you know, his, his uh, following, uh, it's mind it's mind boggling, right? So. We, that's the journey we have embarked and we'll continue on that journey and we'll give, answer your specific questions as Krishna said. As soon as the annual report comes, we'll make sure you get a copy. Okay. The supply chain, you know, in terms of uh, sales laws or uh, product assortment not there, from a, from a quantifying perspective, how, you know, how we have improved, uh, you know, if you index to 100, um, we had, just want to get a sense of how you are improving. I, I'm sure we have improved, just want to understand that. No, no, look, we've moved the journey significantly. Uh, see, if I look at 2014, and maybe you can help, if we were on a scale of about 75 to 80, uh, we moved, we are not nowhere close to 100, but I would say we are closer to the 90s now, right? But Pardon. we've still got a journey to transit. We will get onto that journey as we go. Got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Sir, I have a small question on margin expansion or the margin outlook. Uh, as you have sounded cautionary on the RM, and again, we need to improve our ad spend to gain market share. Uh, so what's the trajectory for the, for the margin outlook for the current year? Uh, on the one where we exited the Q4, what can we expect go going ahead? And what factors would rather influence your uh, uh, margin trajectory going ahead, sir? Uh, thanks, uh, Saket. Uh, one of the disclaimer here is that uh, we will not give the forward-looking uh, guidance here. And uh, of course, uh, we do expect our margins uh, to be stable. Stable. And uh, then we ensure our growth is profitable by way of various means and uh, measures or like mix improvement and uh, uh, innovations in the product profile. Thank you. You know, I've addressed it in the earlier question, Saket, because we I said that we will hold our margins, but our focus is really how do we really play, uh, you know, consolidate our market position. Right, sir. And on the competition part, sir, uh, with, the, with the with new player uh, uh, totally uh, coming up with with a, a with a, a huge size, what kind of uh, uh, volume pressure do you think you can expect when they ramp up uh, uh, their capacity going ahead? I think so. Two players are now particularly uh, becoming very active, and and the bigger one, uh, uh, Grasim, uh, which will be contemplating, I think so, uh, coming up with huge capacity, and they have they have also drawn big plans. So what's the thought process of uh, Esco Noble going ahead in terms of uh, the, this intent of new competitors? Look, I think it's very difficult to hypothesize what's going to happen. As and when players come in, we will be in a more... All this is factored in the growth that we've indicated already for the full year, in the questions already asked, Sakit, right? These are already factored, right? If there are any discontinuity on pricing, etc., that's there, we will look into it, right? As I said, I want to repeat that our endeavor is to consolidate and grow our market position in India. Uh, operator, in the interest of time, it's right. already told over. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. My name is Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So, you know, thank you. Really enjoyed the interaction with all of you. Uh, Lakshmi, your point is taken. This is not to, you know, say that there are, there are two different personalities on a television set or an investor call. We are more than happy to share with you. We are a fairly transparent company. But we also believe that, look, ultimately what we say, we deliver. I think that's more important. Uh, and if you go back to two, three years ago, and you, I think you should hold people for the promises they make. I have been very clear in my narrative. Even if you go to some of the stakeholders, including on a lighter went to a stakeholder, I said, you will not get this share price at this price again. Uh, and uh, the share price, if I remember, the company was 1800 then. It's true. It's not happened again, right? So my endeavors, as our team endeavor is to say that we give you greater value. We make sure that you sleep well. 
if you're invested in our company. We believe that the power of Axel Nobel, with the leadership of Greg, I'm certain, uh, and the dynamism and his thought leadership that he brings into the company, I'm certain this company will grow great heights. And under his leadership, each of us will make sure that his vision of what India should be will be delivered. It's, and I'm delighted because it's in line with what my vision for India is. Right? So thank you very much. Thank you for taking time on a very busy schedule. I do understand you have multiple calls to attend. Do really appreciate each of you for your time. Good luck. All the best. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you so much.